Before we get started, I wanted to say thank you to our friends over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Stay tuned to the end for more information about Squarespace. Hey guys, Mac here. We have now been traveling slash overlanding with our cat Luna for a whole year now. It's insane to think that it's been that long, but also at the same time, it's hard to imagine that we ever traveled without her. A while back, we did film a video about traveling with a cat, but it was more focused on preparing our space in her for life on the road. We filmed that video just two months into being on the road with a cat, and now we have so much more experience and have learned a ton along the way. So we're wanting to share with you everything that we've learned and what we do now to keep our little lady happy out here on the road. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of this video, we thought that it would be a great idea to introduce you to the lady who inspired this video, our cat Luna, who's really a good participant. <laughs> Luna has been a part of our little family for 10 years now and came to us via a Craigslist ad. She's turning 11 in October, and despite the fact that she's an older lady, she has taken to life on the road like a fish to water. When preparing Luna for life on the road, the first major step was getting her comfortable at riding in the car. I will quickly recap that, but if you're looking for more information on that process, I do recommend going back to that first video that we made, and as always, we will include a link to that video in the description of this video down below. In those last few weeks leading up to going on the road, we made sure that we were taking Luna out on short drives every single day. For those drives, she was always in her kennel because we wanted her to have a good bond with her kennel and see it as a safe place. When we did actually make it out on the road, we made sure that those first couple of weeks, we were only doing short drives to ensure that she was settling into her new lifestyle with ease. Now a full year in, Luna still rides in her kennel, this time with the door open, with it seat belted into the back seat. Luna still sees her kennel as being a safe place and uses it to retreat to anytime a large storm rolls in or a loud train passes by. Luna has now gotten so comfortable riding in the back seat that now anytime anybody's riding in the cab with us sitting back there, she acts like there is absolutely no reason why they should be sitting back there and taking up her precious space. She's such a cat. As time has gone on and Luna has gotten more comfortable, we have started to drive more technical roads in our travels. Luna loves a good drive on an unpaved road. She does prefer to ride outside of her kennel just so she has more space and usually proceeds to stretch out across the entire back seat and pass out from the gentle rocking of the truck. She does, however, occasionally like to ride in the passenger seat if she finds it to be unoccupied. Over the last year, Luna has really come into her own at camp. Initially, she had no interest in exploring outside the camper, and that was totally fine. We've always been firm believers that she would open up in her own time, and that has absolutely been the case. We just wanted to make sure that she was doing everything at her own pace. Around the six-month mark, Luna really started to come out of her shell and show an interest in exploring outside. When she did, we started her off in a soft harness and a 30-foot lead so we could keep an eye on her. We also only ever let her out when one or both of us could be out there with her just to make sure that she was doing all right. For months, Luna was perfectly happy with the harness and leash combo, but eventually she did get a taste of freedom and that's because we decided we wanted to try her off leash to see how she would do. We started off by just going for short walks with her and she has never been able to go back. Being that Luna is an older cat, she never really seems to venture all that far. However, in her newfound freedom, she has found that she loves to scale rocks, go for family walks, hang out on the edge of lakes, and smell all the new and interesting flowers and plant life that we come across on our travels. I do want to make it explicitly clear that we never let Luna out alone. There is always one or both of us out there with her just to keep an eye out, make sure she doesn't go too far, and just to make sure that she's safe. We always make sure to bring Luna back into the camper when it starts to get dark, we hear coyotes, or any other type of predatory animal activity. 
Time at camp with Luna has come to be some of our favorite parts about traveling. She's really become such an adventurous spirit and now finally sleeps all the way through the night now that she's getting more exercise. And I think that that's something that we can all be very thankful for. Trust me. There are a few cases when we spend time away from the vehicle and thus away from Luna. Those instances are typically because we're hiking or doing some sort of away from vehicle exploring, and Luna cannot come with us in those cases. So let's start with some of the shorter ones, and then we'll build from there. We frequently do day hikes, leaving Luna behind in the camper. When we do that, we always leave the top down and then give Luna free reign of the rest of the space. The reason why we do this is it's easier to regulate the temperature with the top down. We do that by opening the side and roof fence, which keeps the temperature significantly cooler in the camper versus outside. If we are ever concerned about it being too hot, we absolutely do not leave Luna behind. The threshold is roughly 85 degrees for us not to leave her unattended. If it is on the border of being too hot, we'll either wait to leave for our hike towards the latter half of the day, or we'll relocate altogether. As Luna has grown to be more comfortable with the camper, we've started to implement overnight hikes where Luna is spending the night in the camper alone. In those instances, a lot of the same principles apply as day hiking, but if the case is that it's going to be cold overnight, we'll move Luna's kennel back here into the camper, cover it with blankets so she has a nice and warm place to curl up at night. Otherwise, Luna usually can be found lounging around on the couch waiting for our return. We always leave plenty of food and water for Luna when we go, and in these overnight hike situations, we typically will wait to leave after the hottest part of the day, and then we'll return back to the truck in the morning, minimizing the amount of time that Luna is spending alone. Last year, we hiked the John Muir Trail in 16 days and had to find a place for Luna to stay during that time. We were lucky enough to find a cat hostel, and they said that she did really great. But we know deep down, Luna likes to be the only cat in the house, and thus probably didn't enjoy her feline housemates that much. This year, we have more multi-day hikes planned, and thus are going to be looking for another place for Luna to stay during that time. We're thinking we're going to do things a little bit differently this year. We're hoping to try the app Rover. Rover is going to hopefully give us the opportunity to find a place closer to where we're hiking and a home where she can be the queen of the household. This past year, I flew with Luna for the first time to go visit family. When I booked our ticket, I realized that her kennel was not airline approved because it was a little too big. Thus started the search for a new one. So I purchased this new Sherpa soft-sided kennel of which Luna seems to love even more than her last one because it has windows on all sides. When it came to flying, Luna was an absolute champ. She does have a tendency to be a little chatty when she's in her kennel, so I brought a small blanket to keep her covered so she could settle into her flight nicely, of which she absolutely did. She never ceases to amaze me with how adaptable she is. Now that Luna is spending more time outside, we've had to ramp up the amount of grooming that we do to her, much to her chagrin. Being that she's a long-haired cat, she frequently picks up a lot of debris when she's out on her walks, and so by brushing her daily with a Furminator, we're able to remove some of that debris and also keep some of her mats that happen in the spring when the weather warms up at bay. Even just a little bit of brushing every day really helps manage the mats that Luna is prone to and keeps the fur level in the camper to a manageable level. I mean, somewhat manageable anyways. <laughs> it is no secret that cats like to scratch on things, and Luna is no exception to that rule. In fact, Luna has really taken a liking to scratching on the thermal pack and on the chairs here in the dinette area. However, we have found that keeping Luna's nails really well trimmed keeps her from having that desire to scratch on things, and it's something that I wish I would have picked up on a long time ago. For instance, back when we lived in a house and had a lot of furniture with a lot of cat scratch damage on it. Another thing that we found that helps keep Luna from scratching is keeping her well exercised. We found the more time she has outside, the less of a terror she is at night when the zoomies strike. In fact, when she is really well exercised, she sleeps right alongside us all through the night. For all other health needs, we make sure that we're getting Luna in for her regular checkups and keeping her up to date on her flea and tick medicine. That way, all she has to do is worry about watching all those ground squirrels and not be worried about any sort of bugs or any other health issues. 
Well, that just about covers how it has been traveling slash overlanding with a cat for the last year. I gotta say it. I don't feel like cats ever get the credit they deserve at how adaptable they are and how great they are traveling. Just remember, if you're wanting to start traveling with a cat, start off slow and let them push their comfort zones when they're ready. I think all of us cat owners out there know that cats like to be in control of the situation, and by letting them tell you when they're ready to push themselves, that is how they will feel in control. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope that you got something out of this video. If there are any topics along the lines of traveling with a cat, let us know pop those in the comments below. We love making videos that are full of useful information that help you find your way to your next adventure. Hey, and it might even be with your cat next time. Thank you so much, and until next time, we'll see you down the road. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you are not familiar with Squarespace, they give people a powerful and beautiful platform to create their own website. In fact, our website has been powered by Squarespace since 2016, which is when we got on the road. Squarespace makes it easy to present your travel photos using their professional portfolio designs. You can also display projects in customizable galleries and add password-protected pages to share private work with clients. Squarespace can authenticate your social profiles, letting you auto-post your content to Twitter, Facebook, or Tumblr. Squarespace Analytics makes it easy to see how your visits, unique visitors, and page views trend over time. That way you can gain insight into the top traffic sources, devices, browsers, and operating systems by visits. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your beautiful new website, go to squarespace.com slash bound for nowhere for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. and keeping her up to date on her flea and tick medicine. medicine. I want to tickle my nose. <laughs>